ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರು ನೀಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ದಿಸ್ ನೈಟ್ ಟು ನೈಟ್ಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೈಟಲ್ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಏಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಏಜ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಏಜಸ್ old age disease death and repeated rebirth these are problems in the material world in all ages too much heat too much cold too much rain not enough rain these kind of problems can occur in any age but there are some problems which are or appear to be peculiar to the modern age or particularly acute in the modern age For instance, in India at the present time, uh, there is a lot of discussion about corruption. Corruption can occur in any society in, at any time. But particularly at the present time in India, it is perceived as a major problem. Uh, other problems of the modern world are, for instance, uh, economic instability, widespread poverty, I don't know if we're supposed to say this here, but uh, ecological imbalance caused by, for instance, uh, lignite mining, pollution, overpopulation is perceived as a problem. In India, Pakistan is perceived as a problem. In Pakistan, India is perceived as a problem. So, what, are, uh, oh yeah, apart from that, apart from the uh, macro problems, there are individual problems problems which are more pronounced in the modern age for instance uh, mental problems are very common in the modern age stress anxiety depression schizophrenia etc are considerably more prominent in the modern age than previously so these are some of the problems and what are the solutions now what do we mean by a problem we perceive as a problem something that impedes our well-being and happiness and if we find a solution then it's no longer a problem so uh seen in this way all problems can be said to arise from ignorance because if we know what the solution is then we don't have a problem anymore so we propose that the solution to all problems is the vedic solution because ved means knowledge and uh, problems only arise due to ignorance now the vedic knowledge is given specifically to help human beings and the whole human society to overcome problems problems can be tackled on various levels for instance uh if i cut my finger i can wash it and dress it that is immediate treatment for the problem but the ultimate treatment for getting pains in the bodies and cuts in the bodies is not to get any body any more or put in another way this whole material atmosphere the whole material world is the world of problems so the ultimate solution to all problems is to not get born again in this material world meanwhile while we're in this world there are various problems which we have to face and we may say well if someone cuts their finger to tell them to they should get mukti that's all right but you should also dress the wound and put a uh, plaster on it or if someone's hungry you can tell them well you should become liberated from this material world but in the meantime uh, they would appreciate getting something to eat so the vedic knowledge means which means the knowledge uh, the vedic knowledge means the knowledge of the vedic corpus that means the uh, four vedas the upavedas puranas itihasas so within these uh, within this vast body of literature there are directions on how to address problems in an immediate sense and in an ultimate sense for instance as you're all uh, very well aware there is the ancient science of medicine 
Ayurved, which is an Upaveda or a, a corollary Vedic subject. There is a great Vedic science of another example. There is a great Vedic science of metallurgy, which is lost now. Uh, even now, we have uh, evidence of that. In uh, Delhi, there's that pillar, which is commonly known as Kutab Mina, but the, it's originally known as Dhruva Stambha, which uh, stands without any support and which doesn't rust at all, over, even after hundreds of years. Uh, so, yeah, this is evident. And that uh, Dhruva Stambha, commonly known as Kutab Mina, is uh, of such a quality of iron, so pure that no one in the modern age can imagine how that can be made. So the Vedic corpus uh, gives uh, advanced knowledge of how to deal with our immediate terrestrial problems, uh, which nowadays many people don't believe in all this uh, because the Science was so uh, advanced that in, in the modern age we can't even imagine that. It operated on a subtle level. Uh, but even today people have faith in holy men who simply by mantras can cure others. So that is actually a science, how by mantra, the, uh, by the subtle sound, the gross elements can be uh, rearranged in a beneficial way. But the uh, Vedic knowledge points us, while giving us solutions to our immediate problems, points us toward the ultimate solution to all problems. The Vedic literature points out to us that uh, this material world is by nature full of problems. The very fact that we desire to get free from these problems suggests that our true nature is to be free from all problems. Clearly, everyone wants happiness. No one wants to be unhappy. But the very nature of this world is that, uh, however much we try to be happy in this world, we are subject to innumerable problems within it. Therefore, the ultimate solution to all problems is to get free from the conditions of this material world by going to the spiritual world, which is called Vaikuntha, place where there is no anxiety, place where there is no birth, death, old age and disease, where everyone is uh, fully satisfied eternally in the service of Lord Sri Krishna. Now, uh, because we are in this material world, uh, many people, they don't have faith in the existence of the spiritual world. And they're interested, well, what to do about the problems of this world? Here we have the picture of His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder, Acharya, of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. He is famous for having spread Krishna Bhakti all over the world. And uh, particularly in the Western world, his followers appear to be very otherworldly. You know what otherworldly means? It means concerned with the other world, not concerned with this world. They appear to be very otherworldly, singing and dancing in the streets, wearing to what Western people appears to be strange clothes. Of course, the Hare Krishna mantra is well known in India, but in the Western world, when Srila Prabhupada introduced it, it seemed to be something very strange. So Srila Prabhupada introduced this Krishna Bhakti in the Western world with the, uh, as far as possible, he maintained the original culture which goes with that. But at the same time, he wanted to present to the intelligent class of people, especially in the Western world, that Krishna consciousness is not simply concerned with uh, spiritual solutions, but with solutions for the world as it is today. Srila Prabhupada was very concerned to present to uh, leaders of the world how Krishna consciousness can provide solutions to its major problems. Now, considering that the modern world has such severe problems, uh, it would seem that it would require quite 
drastic changes to make the solution. For instance, uh, in, in, at the present time, there is a lot of awareness, not so much in India, which is one of the most polluting countries in the world, but uh, in other countries, uh, the, of the uh, massive imbalance in the world ecosystem due to pollutants. And uh, people are thinking how to make clean fuels, in other words, fuels which don't pollute the uh, atmosphere. Here in India also, sometimes we see it's advertised clean fuel or eco-friendly fuel, which generally means one that doesn't pollute as much as fuels used to do, less poisonous than others. And with the uh, specter of the world's oil reserves running out, people are wondering, well, what to do? We need alternative fuels. So it's another major problem, shortage of oil, which creates uh, serious problems for countries like Iraq, for instance. They don't have a shortage of oil, but some other countries do, and uh, that's Iraq's bad fortune. So Srila Prabhupada had a radical... He, he offered radical solutions to the world's major problems. Uh, in the 1970s, when Srila Prabhupada was preaching uh, in the Western world, there was the first, what was called the petrol crisis. Up until that time, it had been considered that there's plenty of oil in the world and we can just use it as we like without any consideration. I'm not talking about gingelly oil, I'm talking about the kind of oil that's related to your lignite. It's... So there was the first petrol crisis, and Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada offered the solution to the petrol crisis. He said, don't go anywhere. You don't need motor cars. If you need to go anywhere, you can go by bullock cart. Produce all your food locally. What do you need to go here and there running around like this for? Similarly, the pop problem of overpopulation. Prabhupada's, well, first of all, he said that there's only a problem uh, if the people are demoniac by nature. The earth can provide tremendous amounts of food. Even now, so much land is being used for growing products which are practically useless. For instance, coffee, tea, and tobacco, they are of no nutritional value. Maybe millions of hectares throughout the world are used for growing these products, which are basically just for stimulating the tongue for no uh, actual benefit for anyone. Uh, so much uh, grain is grown to feed animals for slaughter. If the grains are fed directly to humans, then you can get 60 times as much nutrition from the same amount of land. In economic terms, it takes 60 kilos of grains to produce one kilo of meat. So there's really no shortage of food in the world, it's just that people's priorities are imbalanced. Again, overpopulate, if you perceive there's overpopulation, well, family planning is immediately affected if people know that the purpose of life is God-realization. The problems of polluting the world come about due to a civilization that is based on sense gratification. The idea that we will be happy if we have all kinds of facilities to indulge our senses is the cause of so many problems in the modern world. For instance, uh, it's considered that if we have a motor car, well, we can go from one place to another more easily. But it is the very nature of this material world that if we try to adjust it to our advantage, we find that another disadvantage is created. Nowadays, there is so there is a machine to do every kind of work that people used to do physically. But people suffer from having weak bodies from lack of exercise. We suffer from pollution, traffic jams, road accidents, and the the whole in the, the tremendous endeavor that is required to uh, maintain such a complex civilization. We have to. Uh, go into the sea to drill for oil, and uh, if things go wrong, which it recently did off the coast of Florida, 
then there's a tr tremendously uh, malefic repercussions. Created a society in which people have to work very hard just to get the basic necessities of life. While other people, they can't even get any work to do and simply live in complete poverty. We live in a society which, although it congratulates itself on its progress, uh, you can't get fresh food. Most people, they, they never eat fresh food in their life. And all the food we eat, it is full of uh, pesticides and hormones. This is a major cause of cancer. Previously, a rare disease has now become a very common disease. So it's a paradox of our modern society that the very food we eat, which is supposed to nourish us, simultaneously poisons us. So uh, the food we eat, we, the air we breathe, the water we drink, it's all polluted. Uh, well, we, I didn't even start to talk about the moral degradation, which is uh, part of modern life, which is being promoted via the uh, television, cinema, newspapers, educational system. What a few years ago even would have been considered normal moral behavior is now considered foolish and stupid. What a few years ago uh, everyone understood to be uh, highly sinful, such as abortion and contraception and uh, divorce, these are considered normal and proper and good in the modern society. So the Vedic perspective on this is uh, that these are all symptoms of Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga means the age of hypocrisy and quarrel, in which all good qualities decrease day by day. Uh, what is that verse? Tato Anudinim Rajan? Hmm? Ah, tatas chanu dinam rajan satcham shocham shamadaya kalena balina rajan nang shantayo balang smritihi. In Kali Yoga, with the passing of every day, the following decrease truthfulness, cleanliness, tolerance, tolerance in the sense of uh, tolerating difficulty. Shama, shama. Mercy. Uh, bodily uh, lifespan, then uh, bodily strength and uh, mental strength. So all of these decrease day by day by day. The antidote to that is given in the Vedic literatures. Kale doshani de rajan astihi eko mahan guna kirtanad eva krishnasya mukta sangha param bhajit. In Kali Yoga, everything is wrong, it's an ocean of faults. But there's one great quality, which is that if people take to glorification of Krishna, Krishna Kirtan, they can be delivered from all this and can go to the spiritual world. And uh, how does that apply practically in the modern world? Yeah, Srila Prabhupada, he suggested this radical solution to the whole way of modern life. That there's no need for massive industrial enterprises. Basic necessities of life are provided by material nature, by the mercy of Bhagavan. And especially in a place like Tamil Nadu where there's so much fertile land, uh, without much effort one can produce all that one needs locally. Actually the living conditions here are very favorable. In the northern, in the far northern hemisphere, uh, for instance, from England, where I was born this lifetime, during the winter it's dark and very dark and very cold and very difficult to live. But in this climate, one can live very simply. Now, in the modern age, simple living is considered backward or primitive. But in the estimate or in, in the understanding of spiritually advanced people, to be always trying to get more and more and more and more. This is primitive and unintelligent. To live as a servant of one's material desires is the animal platform. Practically, although the modern society is so much developed in technology, this development has developed on the platform of animalistic consciousness. So an actually advanced person is one who is content to live with minimal bodily demands, but is engaged in... Elevation of consciousness. 
So this is the uh, ultimate solution, that if there is to be benefit for human society, we cannot go on on the level of consciousness of cats and dogs. Cats and dogs, they're simply interested in their own personal interest or that of their immediate family. The exploitive mentality of modern society uh, has created the modern problems. To exploit the earth, to... Uh, make our group stronger than others and exploit other people, this is causing so many problems. So the ultimate solution can only, it cannot come by making more material adjustments. In the Vedic literature, the attempt to solve material problems by material solutions is likened to moving a burden which creates pain on one shoulder, moving it to the other shoulder. We solve one problem, but simply transfer the problem to another place. So, our proposal is that it is required to come to a higher platform of consciousness, which means to come out of ignorance. We are born in ignorance. We require to take education. In the modern age, there is uh, much drive for people to be educated, but the education misses the point of life. The education is much, uh, here in India especially, is much uh, focused on science and technology. But it completely avoids the really important questions of life, such as who are we actually? What is the purpose of life? How can we actually attain happiness? What happens after death? So uh, we propose to give education in these topics to bring people out of the ignorance which is the cause of all problems. Now, uh, this should be taken up actually by the leaders of, of society, but we see that everywhere the leaders of society, of society, they are the worst, they tend to be the worst people. When the whole atmosphere in society is corrupt, then the most corrupt people become the leaders. Therefore, the Krishna Consciousness Movement proposes to create a class of actual Brahmanas. For generations in this country, there was the uh, Brahmana caste, which uh, fostered Brahminical culture, Dharmic culture. Somehow, in course of time, that culture became uh, has declined and uh, become detached from the realities of the, the, Brahmin, the Brahminical class has become detached from the realities of society. Uh, still they may perform priestly functions, but uh, they should be able to provide solutions to people's actual problems. Nowadays people look to the intellectuals in universities for solutions to problems. But practically uh, the society for all the intellectual suggestions, society day by day is getting worse and worse and worse. The Srila Prabhupada's proposal was to create a new class of Brahmins. That means, according to the prescription of Bhagavad Gita, Shamo damas tapasho cham kshantya arjavam eva cha jnana vijnanam astikyam brahma karma svabhavajam. They should be actually uh, peaceful, self-controlled, austere, clean in mind and body, uh, tolerant, that means uh, equipoised in happiness and distress, very straightforward, honest, uh, knowledgeable, and vigyanam in this sense means to be able to give, to apply that knowledge for the benefit of human society. And Srila Prabhupada wanted to uh, create communities in which people could live simply under the guidance of such brahmanas, centered on Krishna Bhakti, producing our own food and showing how uh, happy and pure people can be by living simply and chanting the holy names of Krishna. So this is our long-term uh, suggestion for transforming society. Meanwhile, individually, everyone can improve their life tremendously by taking to Krishna consciousness. When we understand that the goal of life is to satisfy Vishnu, then our whole perspective on everything changes. As long as we're, uh, as the main or, or the center of our life is acquiring money, 
power, money, prestige, we can never be happy. We must be full of stress and anxiety. But when we realize that this life, it's just a flash, we're just here for a short time. So there's no use to struggle to be a so-called big man or to have a big position, but that we can actually be happy in our constitutional position of glorifying Krishna. Then automatically we become free from all stress and anxiety. So this is a, of course, this is a very big topic which we don't have time to get into in great detail, but simply this is our proposal. That individually, whatever we are doing right now in our lives, we can uh, improve our lives tremendously by putting Krishna in the center. Understanding who Krishna is, what is our relationship with him, and how we can act in that relationship by the process of bhakti. And for those who are uh, more enterprising, or they may also want to take part actively in this Krishna conscious movement and try to spread this knowledge, the Vedic knowledge, and establish ideal Krishna conscious communities. So for spreading that knowledge, we're distributing books. Uh, before we present the books, I'd just like to ask if there are any questions. I've said some things tonight which uh, some of you may find quite provocative. Uh, obviously, if there is to be any solution to the present very much disturbed society, we're going to have to have a major rethink about the whole direction of society. So if there are any questions about this, uh, please voice them now in speaking, uh, either in English or Tamil, according to your preference. Yes, you have a question. You are saying that society is getting worse day by day. The question is that it's mentioned in Shastra that everything gets worse day by day in Kali Yuga, so how bad will it get? How far can the devotees remedy it? And you're saying it's not mentioned in Shastra that the devotees can remedy but it is mentioned in Shastra. That I gave, that uh, Kirtana Deva Krishnasya Mukta Sangha. One can become free from all these influences by Krishna Kirtan. It's already going on, isn't it? You have become free from the worst effects of Kali Yoga, isn't it? By coming to this Krishna Kirtan. So others can do also. As much as we spread it, that much others can at least have the opportunity to take advantage of that. Any other questions? Brahmin is a particular community and a person who keeps his body and mind clean is a Brahmin. You said that the Brahmin is a particular community and what else? Or a person who his mind and body clean is a Brahmin. Well, conventionally Brahmin is cons considered uh, a community, as you say. Conventionally it is considered thus. But the Shastric definition stresses more on qualities we find in Bhagavad Gita, Chato Varnyam Maya Srishtam Guna Karma Vibhagashaha. Krishna says, I have created the four varnas based on guna quality and karma activity, not on janma. So the guna on which the Brahma karma is based is described in Bhagavad Gita. I already quoted that verse. And persons who have such qualities and work on that basis, they can be considered Brahmanas. So people who are peaceful, self-controlled, austere, clean, tolerant, straightforward, knowledgeable and wise such per and act on that basis, such persons, they should be considered Brahmanas. So traditionally in, in the Brahminical family, such qualities were inculcated. So we see that even today these... Uh, People there from the Brahmana community, they're inclined to these kind of activities. But if a person born in a Brahmana family becomes degraded, becomes a drunkard and a womanizer, then he cannot be considered a proper Brahmana. Is it not? A Brahmana should be someone who is very pure in character and able to help others by giving them higher knowledge. So we appreciate those who are actual Brahmanas whether they're born in a Brahmana family or not born in a Brahmana family. 
We appreciate that. Of course, uh, it's not that everyone has to be a brahmana to achieve the perfection of life. Over time, is it? Okay, I'll just finish. I see. He wants to say a few words? Okay. So, Sway uh, Sway Karmanya Bhirata Sangsitim Labhate Naraha. Anyone in any, whatever status of life one may be, one can achieve the perfection of life by doing his work in service to Krishna. So, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kanda Swami. He's very kindly graced us with his presence. Thank you very much. He'd just like to say a few words before he leaves. But I would like to request him that before you leave, please take some prasadam also. In fact, I don't think we should let you go without some prasadam. Please take some with you.